Hi and welcome everyone. Um, my name is Mario. I'm from my home office in Zurich and I hope you're healthy and well in your home office too. We like to talk today about uh, RPA, the next 45 minutes, so robotic process automation. And just in advance, um, here I see a QR code. So we're going to talk today about RPAs and we would like you to send us your business case you recognized during this webinar, which you would like to have solved with bots or robotic process automation. In the end, we will make like, a, we will choose the best case we find in marketing and we'll design it on the paper and present you already this kind of solution for your bot, which you can um, bring in your own business. So please just scan the code and send us your business case. We might, we will build a solution for you. Um, as I said already from my side, my name is Mori Kochner. I'm from Unity and I welcome on stage Gorov and Kieran. Welcome. So Hello, we have, yeah, Gorov is a daily develops uh, RPAs, right? And uh, Kieran is a real expert about uh, bots. He developed his first bot already in 2000. So, we would like to tell you today a little bit more about robotic process automation. But first, let me explain a little bit why Unity and Cyclone together. Um, we from Unity, we are all specialists for marketing communication for uh, IT solutions. So it means we are consulting, uh, especially in fields like content management, marketing automation, and omnichannel communication. So to find, for example, the right processes, we know how marketing processes should be and can help to design them in a, a modern way, let's call it like that. And Cyclone is a real expert in uh, developing bots. They do it already so long and they really experts as well in designing some prototypes. So they are really good in this stuff. And together we are like uh, really, we combine the process specialists and the professionals for delivering bots for your marketing business. Um, so then let me first explain you a little bit when what it is about when you talk about RPA or robotic process automation. This is a little example how it could be in your business. Um, you for sure do have some information tools where you put all your information about marketing campaigns, etc. And uh, you for sure have two um, data pools where you put all your files and May, you might have some tools as well for distributing your content to different channels, channels like social, web, print, etc. And um, in the best case, you have uh, combined these tools with uh, interfaces which are working well and distributing different information from system to system. But it might be that you may have as well different communication tools or other kind of systems which are not connected with the other tools. Here you see it in orange. So this is like this is like a media break, and you would like to transfer as well information there. But very often it's maybe technically impossible, or maybe it's just very expensive to develop such interfaces. So therefore, bots can help, which uh, are easily to implement and take over the part without touching any existing system. It means they're like a layer above and they're doing their tasks like human would do it. Would do it. And therefore we have different technologies with, which help, helps us with that. That's for example, Stereologic, Automation Anywhere, Your Path, et cetera. So, and why we talk especially now about that. So it's already like last year started to be a big topic, this RPA. Gartner said like that one bot can displace up to 30 times the work of a human FTP, FT which means that they really they they can do really boring repetitive tasks very very fast which are maybe people not so motivated for and uh, this year very new on the top strategic strategic trend technical trend technical trend sorry is um, as well RPA and their garden is telling us that covid-19 uh, rapidly pushes now organization to digital remote and they are even saying that RPA is now inevitable. So means there seems to be no way around in future uh, around these bots. 
it seems like we need to have them. So, and now let me tell you what we show you today. First, I would explain you something a little bit how to you how you can locate the manual process, which might be uh, good for uh, developing bots for and and work, let work your bots for it. And uh, on the second part, we will see RPA in action and what exactly RPA is. And then in the end, we will tell you something more about the benefits in marketing and how you easily can integrate these bots in your surrounding. So let's start with uh, how to locate this manual processes in marketing, how it's possible to find out where it makes sense to put some bots in. So um, we made here a kind of three by three for marketing managers. First, you, you need to do a mapping. Means go there and define the investigation area where you want to take a closer look and then find out who are your stakeholders and we need to talk to them. They have to they have the experiences in the existing processes and then we want to analyze the theoretical actual processes combined with the objects which are touched in the process so it means like different files different uh, kind of documents and so on and then we put it all together with the system architecture the receiver which process touch which object in which system and this all together gives us a big picture which process works really, really good, is pretty short, fast, which is not a good, runs over different systems, and maybe as well runs over systems where which are not connected together, where it might be usable to use some bots. So if we have this information, we're going to evaluate the automation potential because we see exactly where it could be bots useful. If we have done this, we I guess we know what we think what we are doing or what we think what we have to do but doesn't mean that this is what we are really doing therefore therefore we go to the step for with analyzing means we go there and analyze the real practical processes and that we're going to do with the help of process and task mind so some software is recording the employees what they're really doing they're they're watching every click every step and then automatically you will get a kind of process chart where you see what is really going on. And therefore we can compare afterwards the, the theoretical processes and the practical processes, and we can do a kind of gap analysis. And we'll find out, okay, where is the gap and why it's there? And now we're gonna recognize where there's a real automation potential, because maybe there might be more copy and paste as we thought before, and we now really know what we do. And the third step afterwards is the modeling. Means we're gonna really analyze the target process. We're gonna find out which is gonna be the best process for human and uh, bots or machines in combination. So, and then where we find out there could be bots useful, we're gonna really build these bots, automate this process. And in the other processes, we can still optimize them because we have analyzed them and we know where the potential is. And we're gonna make sure that bots and the human are working hand in hand. And then we're really gonna know what we should do and we can enjoy the bots working and running around. So I think that's enough said for the moment. Therefore, uh, Gorov, I would hand over to you about RPA in action. You will show us something, right? Absolutely, thank you, Mario. Quick check, is the screen loading? All good? All good. Perfect, so before we kind of jump into a few slide action to show you what automation is, I think one of the best ways is to visually demonstrate the power of automation. So what we have here is a video that we've created with one of our partners around what exactly is automation and you could give it could give a great idea about where you can start thinking about placing automation within your organization or within your marketing function. So without ado, I will go on to the video. I've purposefully not to taken the sound out so that I can voice over. So the first thing that I'll show is there are so many tasks that we have day to day within kind of our kind of working life which are things that we usually don't enjoy. So think of things around collecting email documents, reading attachments that are coming in, 
extracting details from those emails and extracting details from those attachments. You then go and kind of log in those data into different web-based forms, be it internal systems, out kind of external systems. And then once you're done, you kind of wrap up the process by sending an email out to kind of a group of people or a function or your manager. So there's loads of these activities that we keep doing day in, day out without much thinking, without much creativity. And some of the times it's boring, it's mundane and things we don't enjoy. And those are essentially the activities that we want to automate and take away from you. So bots are really, really good at these activities. Uh, what it allows is as work kind of piles on, people start kind of getting stressed under the work, your creativity goes down. And this is exactly where bots can come in, take away all the load. So how do we do it? The, the, the first step that we do is to understand your process, as Mario said, and then it's time to train the bot. So when we say train the bot, it is we've simplified it here. But what it means is telling the bot exactly what to do. And because it is a rules-based, it's a structured process, you can teach the bot how to lead emails. And this is showing here, it's actually, it's gone through emails. You're teaching the bot what all things that you need to extract from the emails. If there's an attachment, find out everything from the attachment, the relevant fields that you need, copy it into a system, and then email it out. And so once you've trained the bot, the bot knows exactly what to do, and the bot will keep doing it 10 times, 15 times faster than the human could, and it'll always be accurate. So all of these processes that were done by humans are now being replaced by bot. All you now need to do is once you've created the bot, you deploy it so you can run the bot. You can also schedule the bot to run at a particular time. So if you look at this, the bot has gone through the emails, taken out all the attachments, and these are in state saved in a different folder. Once it starts reading those PDFs, it has started extracting. So this is, again, as I said, a simplified version of a demo. But the bots will start extracting all the details from the PDF file, and be it any type of PDF file that you have, be it your invoicing, marketing, leads PDF. As you've trained the bot, it will copy all the data that it needs to. It will then put the data onto a spreadsheet. This is the interesting part. So the bots will act as your virtual worker. So this is not an IT program running in the background. So the bots will have their own login ID and password like you and I would do. So if this is your CRM system, be it a complaints management system, be it any system, as I said, external or internal build, the bots will log into the system with all the data that is extracted. It'll start going in and filling this data in much, much quicker, much more accurate than a human could do. If you see here again, that's what it says. Once it's done everything, it'll as you've taught the bot now, once it's, everything is completed, 100% success, it'll wrap everything up, send an email out. And this is something that bots are really good at because they'll work 24 seven, they'll work throughout, they're highly productive. But the biggest benefit that you get, and especially in a marketing context, you have so many creative people within your department and you're actually giving away so much of the time back to those creative people to kind of start adding more, doing more value add work, things that they enjoy about their roles and not some of these repetitive processes. So that's a very, very brief kind of video and kind of giving a look and feel of how automation is. I'll pass the lead on to our expert, Kieran, to take you through the next few slides. Thank you, Gaurav. Uh, welcome everyone today, by the way. <clears throat> so again, uh, what I'm gonna do is just a quick comment, quick overview as to what a robot is. And when you hear the word robot, you hear the word bot, you hear the word digital worker, it, it's all the same thing. It's just uh, repeated words using uh, to refer to a piece of computer software. What that piece of computer software does is record the keystrokes that people press, and then it plays those keystrokes back at high pace. And as Gurav mentioned a moment ago, a bot or digital worker or robot is normally three, five, 10, 15 times faster than a person. That, that's all dependent upon your computer systems uh, as to how quickly they can work because it's computer to computer interaction. So RPA, robotic process automation, robots, digital workers, whatever you want to call it, piece of software, not a real living machine, not something big that walks around the place, not R2D2 or anything like that. Uh, intelligent automation is, is a little bit up from RPA. And that is taking RPA as the base software. It can work in lots and lots of uh, instances and then adding on a bit of computer intelligence. And that might be, for example, optical character recognition or OCR. That's where the software sees. It looks at a page. It takes that page in and it takes the data out, just as you saw it did a moment ago with an email. Some of that might be data analytics, artificial intelligence, machine learning. That helps you make decisions. It might be neuro-linguistic programming. Again, very fancy maths, 
that interprets text or voice that comes into a, a marketing group, an inbound channel or whatever else. And then the robot lifts that data, moves that data and, and replies to customers. So RPA is the, the click, click, click. The intelligent automation piece is the combination of other intelligent technologies with robots to allow you to uh, make marketing processes automated from beginning to the very end. Uh, lots of people do keep, and I'm going to show you some examples in a second, people involved in the loop just to check the data quality, not always necessary, and they can be removed over time. But why do people use these uh, particular products or robots? Well, the answer is lots of different reasons, and very often these come in combinations. So, for example, it's very obvious that you can get a financial saving from using robots in addition to people or instead of people. Uh, the productivity goes up as well. Remember, one person can now, with a digital worker, do two jobs or more. They're 100% accurate. It will do exactly what you ask it to do, and therefore your compliance standards, your risk will, or compliance standards will go up and your risks of errors and emissions will go down because the bot will do what you tell it to do all the time. Uh, you can make that scalable. So when you're attempting to hire someone into your organization into a marketing role, it's quite a lengthy recruitment process, whereas to add another bot onto your computer system is is, is hours or, or days at worst. And as mentioned, these are really, really quick. So lots of reasons why lots of companies use robots in marketing and in finance and procurement and a whole host of other parts of organizations. Now, let's give you walk you through some examples to bring this a little bit uh, to life. So in the marketing space, there are a lot, and Gaurav, you wouldn't mind just pop me onto the next page, thank you, sir. Then here's one here where, for example, uh, one of the com companies I've worked with were attempting to complete competitor research. In other words, they were attempting to position themselves better in the market by understanding what this large software vendor was doing. And therefore, they monitored their market, their performance, the prices they put out, you know, all sorts of valuable information that you can then take, analyze, recraft your own messages, and then go out to market to sell your product or your client's product better than before. So in this instance here, the robot or bot or digital worker was trained to open up a web browser. And then it was trained to go on to social media websites looking for feedback and reviews. It was trained to go on to competitor websites and look at competitor data and competitor data sets. It took that information just as you saw a moment ago and then downloaded it into a database or an Excel spreadsheet. That way there the bot could then, or the, the reporting program that the bot called, could uh, interpret all that data, run a report, produce the report itself, and in this instance, a person wanted to see the report before it was emailed uh, off to the business. And then that data from that report and those insights were automatically emailed. And as you can imagine, <clears throat> this bot was scheduled to run numbers of times a day in a week. So therefore the information was up to date. It saves someone pressing buttons and going to websites three hours a day. So if you can imagine, if I could get three hours more back in my day every day to be more productive, to do more productive, insightful, creative marketing exercises that would be fantastic in this instance it did and then once this was tried the first time around with one competitor then we built the process to monitor multiple competitors as well again very little training to get the bot to do that because all of the code had been built but lots of benefits in this one instance another thing that marketing companies come across as well is organizing events and for that there's pre uh, registration or pre-lead generation and then post a post event uh, interaction and engagement with customers who you manage to get to your event in this instance here it was very similar you know there's lots of same cases where opened up browsers looked at websites looked at social media took contact information and details out of that put that information again into a spreadsheet in this instance uh, a comma separated file and then did in this instance, we actually did some analytics to separate those customers out, but put that into Salesforce, a CRM package. And then what was done was uh, created unique updates around the information that was received and then sent out notifications to the sales team. And then later on, this was actually extended to send out separate messages to each of the contacts, depending on where they were in the sales cycle. In this instance, again, and this is the good piece of this, 100% automated, 100% the data was scraped accurately. 75% of the process was automated. Again, people wanted to check this as they build confidence. 
later that went up to 90, 95%. The lead generation time dropped dramatically. And again, the most important thing for this particular B2B media company was that their staff were freed up to go and do more uh, creative work and spent more time actually engaging with the leads and the contacts that they got out of this particular process. But those are just two examples. And later on, Gaurav will talk about a multitude of different places where you can use RPA or bots or digital workers and other intelligent automated uh, tools. Gaurav. Brilliant. Thank you, Kieran. Um, now, now that we've got a bit of understanding about automation, how it works, the look and feel, and a few use cases and case studies that we have implemented, what we're going to show you next is, is a variety and a type of different tasks that we encounter every day in our kind of day-to-day -day work. So these are not specific case studies. These are not use cases, but these are the type of work that we do every day. And this could be part of our work kind of day-to-day -day work life. So, And these are everywhere where bots could be applied and bots are really good at. So if we start with the first one, which is simple processes. So these are processes, again, as, as Karen described, which would be very rules-based, very repetitive, but pretty straightforward. You do A, then you do B, sequential steps that you need to do, structured input coming in, structured output going out. So if you have loads of these processes, again, it's a perfect use for bots. Going on to the right-hand side, there are processes that you will do which will have decisions and rules based. And again, it, within the marketing context as well, there will be processes where you'll be segmenting customers, you'll be understanding certain attributes of your customers, and then you would take a decision of what you want to do, what content you need to publish and send them. So be it simple, be it complex, but as long as there's a defined decision, as long as there's a defined rule and a decision that follows, you could think of automating those processes and bots would be perfect use for that. The third one on the left hand side would be reporting and analytics. Now that's probably a no brainer. Bots are really good with data. So if you have to create reports, populate reports, go and grab data from multiple places, create charts and spreadsheets, and then kind of populate a report template. Bots are again, really good and straightforward in using that. The fourth one on the right hand side, and that's where I think a lot of marketing people see a lot of benefits, is search, collect, and collate bots. So there's, this typically a lot of our day-to-day -day work will be to kind of go and search things external or internal kind of websites and portals, gather all of those data, collect those data into one place and then make a decision and then drive insights and actions on the back of it. So bots are really good at that. So you're not actually replacing the whole process through a bot, but what you're doing is you're taking away that whole searching and collection and collating. So earlier when the human is to come and do all of the processes like searching, scanning, bringing everything together, Right now, the person only is going to see every data already collected by the bot on one single screen, and then he or she can just make the final decision, uh, and 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 there and the bot can take it from there. The the fifth one is around matching and reconciling, and as we know historically as well, softwares have always been great with data. So when you have anything to do with numbers and spreadsheets and loads and loads of things to match and reconcile and take a decision on the back of it. Bots and softwares are really good. They can go through thousands and thousands of data points. They can match, reconcile. As long as you have defined the rules of what it needs to do, the bot can do that perfectly accurately and super, super quick. And last but not the least is simple query resolutions as well. So this isn't the intelligent automation. We're not talking about chatbots or an AI or a very, very fancy and expensive AI solution. But you could start thinking of where you have queries which are already coming in through some web forms where the query is already type of semi-structured as well, you could think of the bots, you could think of applying the bots there as well, because the bots could understand those structured queries coming in, it could take an action on the back of it, it can really turn around quickly the answer, or even an acknowledgement back to the customer so that we can have happy customers as well. So these are just a variety of processes, and I'm sure there'll be more, but these are typical types of processes that we encountered in our day-to-day -day activities and lives. So this is where you can start thinking about applying automation. Now, Mario has already talked about how you kind of start analyzing and understanding a process and then you kind of go and build. What we wanted to show you as part of this slide, the key message is when you start thinking of identifying a process and then kind of designing it and then you build it, you test it, you deploy it, immediately in our heads, we start thinking of our traditional IT programs, which take like months and years to deploy. And this is exactly the opposite. It's super quick as a technology. It's very agile. It's super quick. And if you see from a simple to a complex process, it takes between six to 12 weeks to deploy. And now that doesn't mean a quick and dirty deployment without taking care of all the discipline and the necessities. Following all the right rigor of a, of a development cycle 
from proper initial assessment to right to deploying it and supporting it and managing it, this could be done within a matter of six to 12 weeks. And hence some of the stats that you would see, and those are stats by kind of the renowned kind of analyst firms that you would get ROI on these programs within the first few months, within six to 12 months, you'll get your payback because it's a quick to implement. You can start realizing benefits from the day that you've landed the bots in production. And then a lot of organizations hence have started to do this. Whereas traditionally they would be afraid to pick up those big technology programs. This is very, very short and sharp exercises and you can keep churning bots every few weeks. Hence loads of organizations have started doing it. Now, is there just one way to do it? Find a process and automate it? The answer is no. So when you start thinking about how I start, this is probably the right way and we call it a proof of value. This is where you do one process, take it through the end, through to the end, uh, understand what works, what doesn't work in the context of your function, in the context of your marketing department or the organization. But then there's a wider thing to think about. Once you start to think about how I can scale, how I can get more benefits across my function. We have designed a framework for the purpose of this session. We're not going to go detail into it, but just to highlight that once you have identified a proof of value, you've created a nice blueprint that you know works for your function or organization, you then start thinking about what kind of operating model do I want to have? What kind of strategy do I do? Could I create a big business case, finding more and more opportunities, a big business case before I start kind of doing any development, or should I start finding one process and deliver it or a second process and deliver it? How do I manage those processes? And then the last thing is around, how can I start embedding automation into the fabric, into the pure DNA of my organization? So every time I think of a big transformation, why don't I think of automation with it? When I think of outsourcing, why don't I think of automation with it? So then you start thinking about how you scale and make automation a very, very integral part of your wider transformation. The last kind of slide that we have here is a, a lot of organizations, they understand the benefits of automation. This, they know now that you have also kind of gone through it, you would understand how automation looks like. And yes, it's beneficial, but where do I start? And is it just one or two use cases that Kieran talked about? The answer is no. What we've done here is again, through our combined years of experience, created a very a heat map of typical hotspots of automation opportunities across sales processes and marketing processes. And, and these all have details behind it, but there's two key messages that you need to take away from this slide. The first message is the automation is not just a solution that you can apply to one or two use cases. The application of automation is absolutely broad. So across the whole value chain of sales processes, across the whole value chain of marketing processes, you would find opportunities for automation. And the second most important point is that if you still struggle to understand where should I actually start, what are the heat spots, these color codes, the high, the medium, and the lows, they give an idea about where typically organizations have seen opportunities within their marketing and sales department. So it gives you a bit of heat, heat map, it gives you a bit of hotspot and an idea and trigger about where you can start thinking about your first or your second processes. The ones which are in lighter shade doesn't mean automation do not exist. It means that typically organizations have seen that there's a lot of human creativity involved in those processes and they don't want the bot to do that. But the ones which are darker shades are the ones where there's a lot of repetitive processes and are best to apply bots to. Now I'll leave you with here there. And for the last very quick wrap up, I'll once again, very quickly hand the last part to Kieran, our expert. Thank you so much indeed, Gareth. As you mentioned there, look, there's lots of places where you can use automation, sales, marketing, finance, accounts, you name it, it's it's all there. But ultimately, look, if I if I you go away with anything here uh, from your marketing and sales perspective is as Gurav mentioned, if bots work with your existing systems, you don't need to tear systems out. You don't need to spend large quantities of cash getting people to develop really complex code. Uh, a bot sits on top. It'll work with you know ninety nine point nine nine percent of applications as they currently sit. So you can move it in, put it on top, and get this to work really really quickly. Uh, bots can run in a couple of ways. So you can make them invisible to your employees by running something called as unattended bots. They sit in a server room, they sit somewhere else. Those digital workers just work all day, all night, as many hours as you want. It's up to you to give them as many things to do as is possible. And they do the boring bits of work. That It is vital work, but it's repetitive, it's mundane, it's logical, it's sequential, it follows an order. You know, it, all vital, but when you can get technology to do that, get the technology to do that so that then the most important thing, which is on the right hand side of this particular page, 
it allows your people to focus on the more creative bits or the more creative aspects of marketing and their roles, the bits that really do require human intelligence, the bits that really benefit from that. And by benefit from that, you end up with a lot happier staff because they're doing the things that they really enjoy, the bit that got them into marketing and sales in the first place. And by concentrating on those bits, uh, you will usually get more innovation. And by allowing the staff to focus more on the customers and the leads and the bits that drive value, then you're more likely to get a return out of uh, your business and the amount of hours and the amount of effort people put in every single day. A fantastic tool. Uh, Mario, could I hand back to you, please? Amazing. Thank you very much. So now, as we understood what these robots are doing, or these bots in robotic process automation, I think you got now a really good idea about the uh, use cases for them. I mean, it's all about drag and drop in your marketing, searching, collecting, analytics, gathering that data together, which are you doing by your hands right now, and where you can save a lot of time with enabling these bots. So let's talk about how we could start with an integration, how we could start to use bots. And it's uh, it's actually not that hard, as we have seen already from Gorov before. Um, it doesn't take so much time. Very important is just to start right. So first step, as you have seen already in the first charts, is very important that we're going to do this mapping. So I mean, plan some workshops with your stakeholders and try to find out which is actual uh, process you want to really optimize and really want to build with bots. Where are you coming from? What are, is your process now and where you want to go? Um, then in the second step, and uh, there is the analyzing. So it means we're gonna run there usually a kind of process and task mining software, which really registers every step your employees are doing. And there we find really the process out, which is really uh, done actually in the business and not that with which one which is written on the paper. And then we're gonna analyze these gaps and find out, okay, which is the best process and which is the really best process for your bots. This is work with, where we can help you. We have all the experience in that. We have all the expertise in that. But of course, may you might have as well some experience in that and can do it on your own. But if you need some help, just let us know. Then you should be able to find out is there real potential for you to use bots. And if this is the case, go into the modeling. So it means really form a process for your bots and make sure they're collaborating right with your uh, employees so that you get the perfect or the best out of it. And afterwards, you found this process and uh, you were like visualizing it. So then go into realization, developing the bots, uh, train the bots, and of course, do like the um, yeah, run your business and, and start loving the bots, let's say like that. And you see on all this journey, we can help you with the steps. And um, just to make a little bit more the point on the benefits. So once again, for marketers, it can be very interesting because in the end of the day, there might be more marketing budget because you don't need to spend these three hours in research or something. You really can concentrate on your marketing campaigns or other more important things which are which you have to do. Then for sure, the employee satisfaction will be increased because there is less boring, repetitive stuff too, uh, which can be done by bots. Your employee is going to be happy about that because this is not the work which they're going to miss. And then for core, of course, very important from the technical view, um, you have fewer media disruptions. It means even you don't have interfaces between systems, bots will solve that problem because they, they're acting on their own layer. They're transporting the data from system A to B where there is no interface. And that, of course, means as well less mi mistakes because uh, less copy and paste, less a uh, lot repetitive work which doesn't make fun so means really more quality for you and your business and last but not least of course no interfer interference with your existing it infrastructure means we're not changing any existing software or systems which uh, need go through a change management in your in your company no we're just adding additional bots which are not 
uh, touching your systems in that way. They're just interacting with them. So that is a big plus. So let's make you uh, an offer. How to start with that? We want to make you people which are watching here uh, uh, offer, which is really great. We want you to start with your first spot. Means we are offering you a mapping and a analyzing, including the use of a process and task mining software, um, just for 15k Swiss francs. Uh, just this offer is valid until 26th of February, and we're offering you for free for this one week. Um, we're uh, registering your steps with the software, with the process and task mining software, and this uses for free. You got, you're not going to pay any license during this analysis. So if you're interested in this offer to find out which could be your first really great bot, which brings you a great ROI, so then just write me, contact me with your business case, and we will uh, be in contact with you. So that means in the end, I hope you figured out a little bit where there could be a bot in your company, in your marketing. And if you, if you found out, so please scan this QR code and write us your business case. We will take the most creative, most interesting business case, write it on a paper, a concept, write a little small one page concept and hand it out to all of you with our newsletter. And of course, we will directly contact you afterwards. So there, thank you so much for attention. Now we will take a look at the questions. And yeah, we got a couple of questions. So let me see. Um, Peter is asking, can you give some examples of highly beneficial RPA implementations? Might someone answer? Yeah, look, I'll, I'll start, then Gurav, jump in. Look, there, there's so many examples of, of work that actually adds value. It's phenomenal. Um, that's why this category, this software category, has been the highest spend category. In other words, this is where the most amount of money has been invested by global and small enterprises over the past two years and probably will be the same this year as well. So anywhere where there are logical sequences of actions where there's numbers of people who press keys all day long are ripe for automation. Now, when you say, gosh, is it as broad as that? The answer is, yes, it is, because a robot is essentially replacing or copying what people did and then just playing that back at high pace. So if you want to look at uh, examples in uh, finance, there is equal number of hotspots. Gurev and the team can provide those afterwards or upon request. But that can be anything like bank reconciliations. You know, if you look at looking at marketing, that can be very something very, very simple. You know, it can be where people register on a particular website for an offer. The robot can take information off that website, start sending out automated communications. You can build that into a customer journey. Absolutely fine as well if you're in a procurement department. How do you validate a particular uh, 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 suppliers or customers who are co coming on board? They can, you can get a robot to check you know, lots of different databases, both internal databases and external databases as well. So you could complete, you know, know your client checks, you name it. In sales and marketing, we've already called out a couple of examples. And there's more and there's more and there's more where people press buttons in a logical digital way. There's space uh, uh, for robots and there's business benefit from doing that. Gaurav, any particular examples you want to give? Oh, I think you've summarized it absolutely correctly. I think think of any any of the processes, be it some of the processes that where you can save some of the cost, but also think of processes as well, which are more front end where you can start generating revenue. So examples, there could be loads of examples where you can actually get customer queries resolved quicker through automation. You can onboard customers quicker through automation. So not just about the financial savings part of it, but think about how you can make happier customers, how you can bring more customers on board, how you can accelerate your lead generation process so that that means revenue coming in quicker to the organization. So as Kieran said, many, many examples. Amazing. So there was an other question from Ola. Is there a chance to automate a process of manual registration, reg registration of leads in CRM? What should extract the lead from email received Research missing data like role or location, register lead in CRM, is it real? Yeah. What do you think? Um, that, that one's definitely yes. <laughs> 
So what you're looking at there, if you, there's a very logical set of steps there. So if someone, you know, two two things. So one, how do people actually register, uh, you know, in the first place? One of two things. One is they fill in a form. And if that's a digital form, fantastic, because what you can do is get the robot to check the data, check when the form has been filled in, take that data. And where there's information missing, they can go and check public databases to append additional uh, information onto that. And then the robot itself, just like a person would do, takes the data, stores it, and then copies it into CRN system, and then maybe does something else, sends email, starts with marketing messages. Interesting, that's very similar to what Gurav showed us at the very beginning of this conversation as well. So absolutely doable. If registrations come in in a document, then you can use the intelligent automation tools with RPA to read that document, translate the data that's in the document itself or the writing or the text or whatever it is into data, and then the process then follows thereafter. It takes the data, stores the data, does a lookup in internal databases, external databases, or wherever you tell it to do, and then um, takes that data, stores it in the CRM system once more, and repeat. You know, And that's a very easily automated robot task or bot task or digital worker task. So the answer is a definitive yes, and it looked pretty like what uh, Gaurav showed us earlier. One of the case studies, absolutely spot on. And one of the most interesting and the most common case study that we've seen within marketing. Absolutely. Great. Great. So, and let's pick a last question. Um, yeah, as well, pretty interesting. What is the difference to marketing automation? Do I need a bot when I have marketing automation? What do you think, guys? Um, well, the question is, do you have people with automa marketing automation software currently? And the answer is yes. And therefore, where a bot is replicating what people actually do on a daily basis, then you can add a, a robot or intelligent automation into what you do. Um, remember, it, it's there is a lot of marketing automation software that, that currently exists, which is fantastic. But there is a lot of clicking and a lot of moving of data between systems. And that's number one where the bot can, ha can help. If you add intelligent automation into that, then you can extend that functionality a lot more. So where Gaurav mentioned earlier on, the bot takes data, it appends data on, it could then pass that information to you know, a, a, a very complex or simple analytical model. It could then take the output of that model, lift that data, move it somewhere else, you know, build reports, send out emails, take a, a customer journey and start sending out the right information at the right time to the right people, and then respond to that information that comes in. So it is a, a, a complementary, if not a standalone tool that would allow you to do a heck of a lot more than you can currently do with some of the marketing automation tools on this market. I'll add a quick couple of sentences. I think totally agree with what Kieran said. I think marketing automation is fantastic. And as you know, we have dedicated softwares for that. But then one thing that there's always limitations is with some of the third parties, some legacy systems, some external sites, you'll always have areas where you miss the connectivity. And that's where robotics would come in. It'll not come in and try to play in the same market that marketing automation, but it's more about where you have all of those missing interfaces. You still need to copy data from one system. Within marketing, I'm sure you'll be working with thousands of external systems and external websites and third-party softwares. And that's where the bot comes in. One very interesting analogy that I read is like, where is marketing automation? If you think of this thing, example, marketing automation softwares as parts of the spider's web, and it plays a part being the part of the web, whereas automation is the spider. So it will connect all parts of the web together. Brilliant. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah, we're very good in time. I would say we save you some time as bots do. And we are at the end. So thank you so much, Kieran and Cora, for these insights. And to the audience, I hope you got a good idea of what bots are doing. And if you need any help, just contact us. And we wish you an amazing afternoon. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye.